everyone! In this tutorial, we'll be creating a subtle ombre shirt using a paintbrush method. Here are some of the supplies that you'll need. It's super important that you choose fabric or clothing that has some cotton in it. The higher the percentage, the better, and 100% cotton is best. Otherwise, if it's something like polyester or something synthetic, and you're not using dye made for synthetics, it's not going to take the dye. Next, you'll need a paintbrush. I'm using this 3-inch one that's made for painting walls, and it worked very well. Next, you'll need some paper towels on hand. And then, of course, you'll need some fabric dye. I'm using these Tulip Powder Fabric Dyes, but liquid dye should also work. And then you'll need a container for each color of dye you're using. So the first step is to either wash your clothing or soak it in water. I just went ahead and soaked mine in this bucket. This will help remove any sizing that might be on the fabric and also the shirts will need to be wet for the dyeing process. So go ahead and squeeze those out and make sure that they're not dripping wet. Now this project is pretty messy so if you can do this outside that would be a good idea but you'll still want to go ahead and cover your workspace with a plastic tablecloth or garbage bags. And then once you've done that, lay the shirt out flat and try to remove any wrinkles and get the ends of the shirt all matched up as best you can. And then you'll want to put your containers of dye right next to the shirt. And I'm using the red container for pink dye and the blue container for blue dye. And you'll want lighter colors like pink higher up on the shirt than blue. So I just put the container in line with where I'll be putting that color of dye on the shirt. It's a good idea to put on rubber gloves so your hands don't get stained and we can go ahead and add some dye to the water. So I'm using this tulip pink dye and I'm just going to pour a pretty good amount but not too much because we don't want the dye to be super strong or it will be harder to create the ombre effect. Then once you've added the dye to the water, go ahead and stir it. And the more dye you add, the more intense your color will be. Mine ended up pretty pastel and subtle so if you want it to be more vibrant, add more dye. So now I'm going to do the same with the blue dye and then stir that up. If you find that the dye isn't strong enough, you can always come back and add more dye to the water. So now we're ready to start on the shirt. And the drawback of working outside is you might get a little dirt on your shirt like I did here, but don't worry if that happens, it should come off just fine. So now I'm dipping the paintbrush into the pink dye and I'll just be adding this right to the center of the shirt. So since we're doing two colors on the shirt plus the white at the top of the shirt, just imagine dividing the shirt into three sections and then you'll want to keep each color within its own section. So on this middle section here, I want it to be the darkest right in the middle and then fade out on the top and bottom. So I'm going to concentrate the most dye there in the center. And then the more you work with the brush, the less dye will be on it so you can use it to blend out the edges. When you first dip the paintbrush in the dye, always go right to the middle of the section instead of the top or the bottom edge because it will have the most amount of dye when you first dip it. So I'm just going to keep working with this, making sure that the edges are as blended as possible and the most dye is concentrated in the middle. And I'll be back when I'm done with this section. So this section is about done now. You can see that the edges are blended out and the most dye is in the middle. And then you can just take a container of water and go ahead and clean the brush off in the water. 
And if there's any more blending that you need to do or any spots that are a little too dark, you can just take the paintbrush with water and blend those out. And also take a paper towel and clean up any drops of dye that might be left next to the shirt so they don't accidentally get on anything. So here I'm just coming in with water on the paintbrush to blend things out. Then I decided that I wanted the dye to be a bit more concentrated here in the middle, so I just went ahead and added more of the pink dye. And then clean up any of this dye over here. And now we can start adding the blue. So for this one, I want to concentrate the most blue down on the very bottom edge of the shirt and then kind of fade it up. So when I first dip the paintbrush in, I'll just go right to the bottom of the shirt and then blend upwards. And you'll want these two colors to overlap quite a bit so they blend well and create a third color there. And sometimes the color will travel up kind of a wrinkle in the shirt. And I noticed that I had this color getting a little bit too splotchy right here. So I just came in with water on the paintbrush again and just blended that out. Just make sure that you wash the paintbrush off well before you do this. And then back to adding the blue at the bottom. Just keep working with it until you like the look of it and everything is well blended. And it's important to note that when the shirt is wet, the color appears much more intense than it will be when the shirt is dry. So keep that in mind as you're working. And if the colors aren't vibrant on the shirt, you'll need to add more dye to the water. So I'm just going to keep working on this, blending everything out and fixing any splotches that might appear. Then do any last minute fixes. Then put the shirt onto a hanger and very carefully lift it up. Then let it drip off the water for a minute or two. And you'll want to hang this up somewhere that it can drip and it won't ruin anything. So I just like to hang it up outside. And then you'll want to leave it hanging on the hanger at least overnight. It's best if you can wait 24 hours. And while it's hanging, you can also take the paintbrush and fix anything that needs to be blended out more. Then once you left it overnight, we can go ahead and rinse it out. So I'm using cold water to rinse it and make sure that you don't touch the white part of the shirt to the colored parts of the shirt and just keep it in the same position it was with it when it was hanging with the darkest color at the bottom. Then once you've rinsed it out, wash it in warm water before wearing it. And that's it. Here is the finished shirt. I thought this turned out really pretty. It is definitely very subtle though, so if that's the look you're going for, definitely try this out. I hope you enjoyed this DIY ombre shirt tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I have a few other tie-dye related videos on my channel and I will put those on screen. If you'd like to see future videos, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you so much and I hope you have a great day.